So I have with me uh, Niant. Niant is Chief Financial Officer of Vistara. So first of all, thank you, Niant, for finding time, uh, you know, to uh, to meet me and to talk with me. For young uh, audience of mine, I would fundamentally like uh, to understand from you a CFO's perspective on this very young industry, um, you know, of of of, of airline, and, and overall in context of a very young country like India. Uh, first of all, I think thank you for inviting me and it's always a pleasure, you know, talking to you and also uh, talking especially in relation to a country which is made of young people and to, to see how we can contribute, you know, to their success in some form. Basically, a chartered accountant by profession I was qualified in 1988. I have worked in very, very uh, varied industries, you know, starting with cosmetics, you know, LACME when it was originally under the Tata uh, fold then move into steel, then into telecom, and after that hotels, which has been my longest stint for about 13 and a half to 14 years. Again, you know, back into a very different industry called real estate and private equity, and now into airlines. Uh, two very specific question in relation to, you know, uh, perspective, I think. We are a young country now. I think we have a large population which is going to be between 16 and 25 or 16 and 30, I think, for the next 10 to 15 years or so, which is both an asset and can be a liability also sometimes. But I think it is up to us as countrymen as to how we utilize this asset so that we don't get into this liability side of it, actually, if uh, in a pure accounting or a finance kind of a uh, language. Uh, obviously, you know, from an asset perspective, having a young force, work workforce means higher productivity, more of enthusiasm, but at the same time, the country has to have enough number of jobs to satisfy them, I think. And the other challenge, I think, which I foresee from a very, very different perspective is, if we have such a young force, are we reasonably as a country equipped to throw out the requisite skill. So I think that's going to be the greatest challenge and our success will highly be dependent upon, you know, that uh, uh, factor, if I was to say so. I think from an airline's perspective, airlines will always remain a little young, you know, industry, primarily because, you know, 60 to 70 percent of it is, you know, either a crew, whether you call it as a cabin crew or a tech crew, etc. I think, yes, uh, uh, this industry he does attract a lot of you know young talent and i think that will continue to do so for a long time actually you know hmm. so take us through the complexity part of it because a lot of people talk about you know the flying part the glamour part uh, but not many people understand that you know what kind of tough decisions which you make uh, in terms of you know financial decisions in terms of day to day operations decisions uh, it is not an easy business by by any means right i think he, as you rightly said i think uh, just as you are an outsider i have been also an outsider to this industry i think the only uh, good thing is that this industry has a lot of similarity in some form or the other to hotels where i have probably worked for the uh, longest period of time having said that uh, the two have a very, very different financial perspectives, you know. There is, uh, hotels generally is a high gross margin, you know, industry, airlines is not. Mm -hmm. So the room for error or the margin for error is very, very little. I think, you know, uh, I am just to give a very simplistic example of, you know, where one should fly, how much one should fly, what kind of, you know, load is required to ensure that at least at the contribution level you are you know making money mm. and how much you depth you go in terms of you know uh, by depth I means many times you have a decision of you know whether you should in increase a station or whether you should fly at to the same destination a little more so I think there are that, that these are very simplistic and a day-to-day -day kind of a decision uh, if I was to say so mm. taking aircrafts on you know whether one should buy or whether one should lease mm and both have their own you know sets of challenges mm -hmm. there is also a third component which i think in india has been exploited by a lot of airlines is sale and lease back mm -hmm. but i think that's also uh, what sometimes looks like as very simple is actually not very simple mm -hmm. because whenever you do any kind of sale and lease back at the end of the day you are paying a higher lease rental by booking some profits and therefore you are paying higher lease rent over a period of time so yes it has a short term gain but in its it can also have a long term pain. 
more than the financial, I think there is a huge amount of operational complexity. It's a very live wire kind of a function, you know, especially when you are doing a crew rostering or how do you manage, you know, especially given the special kind of a guidelines which have been issued by the regulatory bodies where you can only fly up to a certain limit, you can only, there are a fair amount of, you know, if I was to say, uh, checkpoints before which you, you can make a person you know fly or not fly plus at the last minute let's say if a crew turns sick how do you call the new crew mm. i think these are very complex decisions well, let's say for example you should go on a fixed model of you know insourcing versus outsourcing that's mm. another very big challenging item and in the short term uh, many times as a startup airline you end up doing a lot of outsourcing but you know then you don't get the benefits of scale because as you grow, if your cost remains variable, then it becomes very, very difficult to get an improved margin. So, I think these are some of the day-to-day uh, -day decisions which I think uh, definitely, you know, require a fair amount of attention, a fair amount of, you know, uh, insight before you actually get into something. For a young audience, which, m which mostly is related to, you know, writing platforms, uh, you know, in hackathon or uh, creating these point apps or something like that, give us, the, give us the nature of complexity of data which you face, whether you are going to a board at a macro level or, 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 or kind of difficulties which you have faced in terms of successfully doing GST or a day-to-day -day things where, where you find, you know, a, 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 a data or or a, or or a intelligence of data in in some form uh, or in some fashion would have really really helped an airline airlines in my view have not invested so much into data analytics at least in india at least primarily because one of the issues which have been hitting a lot of indian uh, aviation is the very insignificant levels of profitability actually mm -hmm. in some form but airlines throw up data you know you know, like, you know, uh, yeah. uh, nobody's business actually, mm. you know. Let's say if you have 10 aircrafts, they're flying six sectors a day, which is 60 mm. flights a day into 148 passengers and into if you 30 and you go on and on. Mm. And you have so much of data, data record which gets created. Typically, you will be always on community platforms in airlines mm. because it's very, very difficult to have a customized system because it costs very, very uh, high. So, how do you basically get the data into your own data warehouse in such a way that you can slice and dice the data in the way in which you want? Before GST, we were under centralized registration and therefore, you had to pay a tax in one area. So, nobody had thought of, you know, okay, why should have I have a record of how many boardings have taken place from a particular state or vice versa. Mm. Suddenly now you have been forced that you know the payment of tax has to happen in a state from where you have actually boarded. So suddenly against you know where you have required to file one return in one country, mm. you are suddenly required to file 50, 60 returns in a period of one month. Mm. So the complexity has so increased uh, that it, it requires a huge amount of data analytics. Now unless and until your systems are geared up to record the data at the right inception level, okay, where you know what's the data, what the what's the opening fuel in the cockpit, what's the fuel at the end, because because that determines what's consumed in that sector. Mm. Unless and until you have the data recording at that level, mm. you can never get the root profitability to its mm. you know mm. best. Fortunately, we have been able to develop a fairly robust Excel system, mm. which now. We, the stage at which we are probably need to go into you know some kind of an automation but you know yes uh, it, it does throw a fair amount of challenges actually you know from a in a very simplistic way you have also defined data from different uh, you know entities which are not in your hand coming from different places in a different formats right if we consider vistara as a, as a, as a, in a state of incubation today okay or or a sort of uh, you know, a startup which is getting stabilized now what kind of what kind of uh, of uh, of potential you see uh, from an information technology per se so that you know uh, you know your team uh, who manages you know enterprise risk 
uh, will be able to give you far better insights and progressively improve Stara? Uh, it's a good question actually. You know, uh, I think globally we have always seen that airlines has been a high risk industry actually and we have seen a fair amount of airlines folding up, a lot of new airlines coming up and I do feel that you know at, at somewhere I think you know understanding the risk has been one of the largest issue in the uh, industry actually. If I was to put one single factor you know which can make a dramatic change I think to this is how does one basically get consistent data for its past and how do you project your future you know today we are a customer centric industry and you know understanding the customer is the most important thing actually a lot of industries have this challenge and I'm quite sure you know we also have that challenge only thing which I wanted to tell is I think as you grow larger you carry millions and millions of passengers. If you are able to actually get a good hang over your customer data, it can actually be your biggest rewarding point as you go forward actually. That, that I would say is the biggest area which one can, information technology can actually help. I'm very happy because in audience, I hope you know people who are followers of big data, people who are followers of uh, machine learning part of artificial intelligence, uh, people who are, uh, you know, database, uh, you know, experts, I hope they are listening. In this very simple conversation, you have kind of given them four or five use cases to work on. So extremely thankful for that. You love to travel and uh, you understand food and you yourself are a uh, uh, foodie. So tell us something about, you know, how this, uh, you know, passion for travel and this love for food happened. I always had a little bit of a passion of travel. I can, I'm quite sure that I can say that I think if not every year, at least every alternate year, I've been able to make a trip. I, I travel, because it was my hobby, because it was my passion, you know, I wanted to work in industries, uh, you know, uh, which are associated with travel. Mm -hmm. And I was very fortunate actually to be, you know, mm -hmm. be a part of it. Uh, and I definitely want to see more and more world. Mm -hmm. Last year, in fact, I have been to one of the most amazing trips, if I was to say so, which was I take undertaken an Alaskan cruise, con to Fairbanks, which is probably at the uh, absolute, you know, yeah. uh, or capital of Alaska, and you know, came back, and also then Canadian Rockies. Mm. The next on the list on the exotic is the Antarctica cruise. Wow. If not next year, the year after next, for certain. <laughs> well, on that note, thank you very much, Nian. Uh, I'm I'm absolutely certain that audience will, uh, you know will not only understand the complexity what we have spoken, but also understand the balance of life which you have talked about. It is not everything about work. There are so many other things which you can explore outside of it and build hobbies and, you know, and, and, and at least enjoy and, and explore whatever you have in your hand. Thank you very much. Welcome. For time for, for me and my audience. Thank you very thank much. Thank you.